Hello, welcome to Daily Prayer for the 21st of June. It's good to be with you today. O God, make speed to save us. O Lord, make haste to help us. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and shall be forever. Amen. Alleluia. Psalm 70. Be pleased, O God, to deliver me. O Lord, make haste to help me. Let those be put to shame and confusion who seek my life. Let those be turned back and brought to dishonour who desire to hurt me. Let those who say, aha, aha, turn back because of their shame. Let all who seek you rejoice and be glad in you. Let those who love your salvation <clears throat> say evermore, God is great. But I am poor and needy. Hasten to me, O God. You are my help and my deliverer. O Lord, do not delay. Glory to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and shall be forever. Amen. A reading from the letter of Paul to the Romans, chapter 6. What then are we are to say? Should we continue in sin in order that grace may abound? By no means. How can we who died to sin go on living in it? Do you not know that all of us who have been baptised into Christ Jesus were baptised into his death? Therefore, we have been buried with him by baptism into death, so that just as Christ was raised from the dead by the glory of the Father, so we too might walk in newness of life. For if we have been united with him in a death like his, we will certainly be united with him in a resurrection like his. We know that our old self was crucified with him, so that the body of sin might be destroyed, and that we might no longer be enslaved to sin. For whoever has died is freed from sin. But if we have died with Christ, we believe that we will also live with him. We know that Christ, being, dead, uh, being raised from the dead, will never die again. Death no longer has dominion over him. The death he died, he died to sin once for all. But the life he lives, he lives to God. So you also must consider yourselves dead to sin and alive to God in Christ Jesus. There were lots of jokes on the subject of confession. My particular favourite is about a man who decides to go to confession after many years of having not gone. And uh, when he goes into the confessional, he can't believe his eyes. There are baskets filled with chocolates, plus optics for brandy, whiskey, gin, and a small refrigerator containing bottles of beer. The man says, oh, father, things have certainly changed since I last went to confession. And he hears a voice saying, get out, you idiot. You're on my side. But joking aside, confession is an important part of life for a Christian, regardless of our tradition or our church background. We recognise who we are before God. We're imperfect. We are people who sometimes get things wrong. And that's having just got out of bed in the morning. And also we realise who God is. The nature of whom is love, compassion, holy, all good and life-giving. And it's because of this nature of God that we can draw near and make our confession. Some people find it helpful to seek the advice of a priest to assist them, while others just choose to communicate to God in prayer. Either way is perfectly valid. 
There's no compulsion to talk to a priest. And absolution and forgiveness is given by God to all who truly repent. And this is important because although we are human and we make mistakes, by acknowledging and confessing those mistakes and asking for strength to turn away from the things that we know to be wrong, we can know peace with God and peace within ourselves too. And that turning away is called repentance. It's a rather churchy word, isn't it? But what it means is to turn from our wrongdoing and to turn in the way that's right. Making our confession isn't a kind of a get out of jail free card or anything like that, but it's the beginning of an act of turning away from what's wrong and looking ahead to a renewed relationship with God and our neighbour. And that's why in the Church of England, the prayer of absolution or the forgiveness of sins begins with the words, Almighty God, who forgives all who truly repent. Only God knows what's in our hearts. What are our motives? What are our desires? What are our longings? But if they're not right, then we are required to put them right. Not simply to think that we don't have to change. Making confession isn't about doing something wrong, receiving absolution and going out and doing it again, regardless. No. Confession is actually a transformative process for us because it can relieve the burden which weighs us down, that burden of, of guilt or shame or anger. We are truly free. So, should Church of England folk go to confession? Well, the official line is, all may, some should, but none must. But should Church of England folk confess their sins? Well, absolutely. We must come before God. St Paul writes, all have sinned and fall short of the glory of God. And because we have all sinned, we all need to come before God and to acknowledge that need to repent, that falling short and know the freedom that comes from forgiveness and a new start by the grace of God. So let us pray. Lord, shine a light upon our darkness, yet with love and bring us to healing and wholeness. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory, for ever and ever. Amen. So may the love and the peace of God, through Jesus Christ, be with you today. Amen.